Hey guys, just Nick from Highview here again. So just wanted to go through what we need to do on Xero uh, accounting software um, that most people or a lot of people are using just to work through the process of what we actually need to do to make sure we enable the JobKeeper payments and get the information that we need to get to, to the ATO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen onto the Xero demo company. I'm just gonna work through a few things. So as you can see now, we have the Zero demo company. Now, obviously it's a pretty similar one, hopefully to yours, um, and we'll just work through the process. So if I go into payroll and pay employees, and go to these, you can see here I've got pay runs, and what I'm gonna do first of all, is I'm just gonna delete this draft weekly pay run, which shouldn't be there, so ignore me doing this. We'll go back to what I was originally going to do, back to the pay run screen. Now you'll notice uh, this, this spot here where it says payroll support during COVID-19. So basically what's gonna happen there is we can click this visit our payroll support page. So I'm gonna click on that and we'll go into what they've got here. So the government support, getting ready for job keeping payments. First things first, number one, check your business is eligible using Zero's turnover calculator. Now, a lot of people have probably checked your business is eligible and you've looked at the 30% turnover, uh, declining in, decline in turnover, I should say, but here's a nifty little way that Zero is gonna pull your data and, and look at it in the turnover calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, click on turnover calculator, and I'm gonna see how the demo company goes. So as we can see, we have the month of March, and this is on a cash basis. So when the actual invoices have been received is a date that they get recorded. So we can see here in 2019, uh, we had 61,625 come in. 2020, we only had $37,080. Therefore, as you can see, we have a fall of 24,545, which is a 39% de decrease. Great, well not great, I should say, it means we've had a bit of issues in the business with this COVID-19, but effectively we have met the more than 30% decrease. Now, if you are on a cash basis, we were, uh, or for BAS purposes, we were under the impression that you did have to use a cash basis for calculating this turnover. However, you can use the accruals method. Uh, we've just had clarification from the ATO. Now, as you can see here, this is slightly different. This is based on the actual invoicing that gets done. So the date the invoice gets done, uh, not when you physically get paid the amount. So as you can see here, Similar amounts because it's been all oh, these people don't really have debtor problems, but effectively it goes at a 38% de decrease in, in turnover, so they meet it on a cash and accruals method. So that ticks a box. So we'll just go back here to uh, back again to the payroll section. If I go to payroll and pay employees, and we'll just go back to the rest of this support page. So we've ticked off number one that we're an eligible business. Now, the next step is to enroll with. Uh, enroll your business with the JobKeeper payment scheme with the ATO. Now, a lot of people have probably already done that and hopefully you have done that by this stage. It's an online application form which we've sent out a fair bit of data and most of the people receiving this uh, this video probably would have either enrolled themselves or asked Highview to enroll for you and we would be, would be going through that process if, if it's not already done. Third step is to set up single touch payroll. Again, most businesses with employees should already be set up on single touch payroll. Um, as you can see, this business has got the, the, the tick there, the green tick, which means it is set up and um, up and running on single touch payroll. If you aren't on single touch payroll, we probably need to get that address sooner rather than later. As you can see there, number four, enroll employees for JobKeeper payments. So we need to notify the ATO at the time uh, or, or the particular fortnight, you will be starting the JobKeeper payments for your employees. Now, as you can see here, there's a button that says enroll employees. Zero has put them into a few categories for us. So enroll your employees for JobKeeper payments. The categories being potentially eligible, and we've got five of them there at the moment, and unlikely to be eligible. So if we look at Sally, they've classified her as unlikely to be eligible, and I draw your attention to the red notes here. It says she started on the 31st of December 2019. So what does that mean? Well, we know being a casual employee, you need to have were at least been employed by the business for at least 12 months from the date being the 1st of March 2020. So because she hasn't met that criteria, she started in December 19, being a casual employee, unfortunately, Sally is not an eligible employee. So Zero's effectively told us that we can't enrol her for this particular purpose. But with that being the case, Let's look at Odette. So we click on Start JobKeeper. Now you'll see here from the drop down, we've got two different options ATO Fortnite 1, ATO Fortnite 2 with the relevant dates. 
you notice that this program does go for 13 uh, fortnights. However, it doesn't have all 13 there because the ATO, well, we can't future date, the ATO won't accept a future date. With that being the case, we're sort of effectively backdating because it is uh, mid-April and we are backdating to the 30th of March. So what we'll do is we'll click on there and we can then go save for reporting. Again, we keep working through. Oliver Gray, full-time employment, started 31, ticks that box, um, is over the age of 16, is a resident. We can also tick him now. If he was going to start from Fortnite One again, click from the drop down, save for reporting. We've then got Tracy. Tracy's a part-time employee. We can tick on her. She ticks all the boxes. She's filled in her notification or nomination form, signed that and provided that back to us. So effectively, we can enrol her. Now, I've still got two here that are potentially eligible. Um, like for instance, Sonia Michaels, she's part-time. I'm not gonna enroll her. She might not have nominated that she wants to receive the JobKeeper uh, payment from our particular employer because she might work elsewhere and has ticked them off. For whatever reason, I'm just gonna leave them there for the time being. So, what I've done now is I've effectively nominated three of our employees. And I've also, by this stage, should have got their signed nomination forms just to save for a rainy day in case the ATO do want to review them. Once we've done that, this actual information that I've just done, it won't go to the ATO yet. This information won't go until we actually file our next pay run. So just by doing this, nothing's really happened to the ATO. We've just, um, we've just advised our, or the zero system of the start date. Once we file that information, we'll go to the ATO. As just going back on this, um, if I go back to these fortnights, we did see that, um, if I click on here, the ATO fortnight one, ATO fortnight two, 30th of March to the 12th of April. This does not mean that you have to change your payroll cycle. You might be on weekly, for instance, and you might your pay date might be the 1st of, uh, 1st of April, and it might be then, what is it, the 8th of April or whatever it is. You can see here that those two weekly pay dates fall within this time frame. Therefore, you do get a fortnight's pay. The ATO will go off your pay dates but also importantly, you need to lodge your STP. That is critical. Once you do the pay run, file it immediately so that that information goes to the ATO. They can pick up the pay dates and they fall to the appropriate fortnights to ensure that you have two, in, two payments if you're on weekly in each fortnight. If you're on fortnightly, you have one of the payment date that falls between those, those, um, those dates. If you are on monthly, it will be prorated, so we just need to be careful there. I'm just gonna jump out of that for the time being. And then the other thing we need to consider is um, basically how we process the JobKeeper payment. So how do we do that in zero? Now for the time being, I'm gonna take a quick look at Odette just to see what payroll calendar she is on because I do know that this particular demo company has a couple of different uh, pay calendars and I'm just gonna to go to employee and I'm going to go to employment and just check, yep, She's on the weekly payroll calendar. So I'm going to look at our uh, pay employees tab and I'm going to say that we're gonna add a pay run for this particular week. Obviously this is, uh, well actually it's pretty much on time because the weekend's tomorrow, so it's not far off the money, but we'd be doing this probably in a day's time. And we can see here, that a debt, great example, she's just under the total gross earnings of $750. She's actually $735. Now, if I click onto her, we know that we need to top her up and pay a minimum of $750 uh, gross. First thing I can see when I click on her is I can see that on these pay, pay slips here, it will now say JobKeeper enrolled and her starting fortnight. What we do need to know is we need to know we need to get this earnings rate to at least $750. So if I go to add earnings line, click the drop down, zero is already created in our file, a JobKeeper payment top up. Now, if I click OK on that, that will then give me a fixed amount, which means that I can add the $15 to there to get to the $750. This will then recalculate the tax. It won't adjust the super. Now the super in this demo company isn't quite set up correctly, so I'm just gonna change it to the 9.5% on statutory rate. And effectively that will recalculate the super on the ordinary earnings when it wants to load, it will do so. And it will be based on the 735. This JobKeeper payment top up, if I'm just going to open up these 
uh, payroll settings just to show you the setup because some of you may have already gone ahead and made your own. And the cr key critical point in this is making sure the settings are right. So if I go to pay items, you can still use your own JobKeeper top up payment as long as it's set up and I'll go through it. As long as it's set up, first of all, as an allowance, the type, zero is now updated this. Originally, they were advising to put it as other. There is now a JobKeeper type that you'll need to select, and that is a critical point. We we'll then go down and say that it's exempt from super contribution. That is effectively uh, an optional case. So you might have two. There might be some employee that you want to pay super on for some reason on these top-ups. There might be some that you don't. So you could set up two different ones if you were opting for either or either. But effectively, majority would be exempt from superannuation. So they're the critical points in that. So we'll just jump out of that and we go back to a debt here. And I'm going to go back to the, oh, actually, I probably should go down and, uh, and click save. Um, and if we'll go down to our next, save the next employee, which is Tracy. Now, for some reason, Tracy hasn't worked any hours, maybe been stood down or something like that in this time. We, what we'd have to do in here, again, add the JobKeeper payment top up, increase the fixed amount to $750 and go through the process of updating that and save and close. Now we'd then go through the process of lodging or file or posting the pay run, I should say. Are you sure you wanna post this pay run? Yes, we can then file it. It's critical that you file it after that. Now I do note that the superannuation here is zero. That's just because of the settings in the file. There should be some superannuation on a debt, none on traces because this 750 is exempt. Um, then what you do is you would file it normally to the ATO. I'm not going to do this in this instance because it is a demo company. So we've ticked off, we've enrolled them, we've back paid them now. As you saw then, I did or added the JobKeeper payment top up on the fly. If you know that you're going to need to add them onto employees at each given time, you can set it up in a default template, which if we go to payroll and employees, we can then click on a debt and we can add to the pay template here. We can add the earnings line and select JobKeeper payment top up. We'll probably leave that blank because if she does do different hours, we, that might change. So we'll leave that blank for the time being. You can go through each of your employees that are eligible for it. And effectively, first of all, you should probably save it. And then you will be able to um, change each employee and add that to each employee. So that's how we record, record the JobKeeper payments for an employee and how we process a pay run. But what about payments that we've missed already? So that pay run I just did was for tomorrow, the 21st of April, but we need to go back and backdate a payment for say the first fortnight or the, the first period being the, if I go back to in my employee section, for starting from the 30th of March. As you can see here, again, these are overdue and not filed. Ignore that because it's a demo. They should all be green on your file, obviously meaning that you filed them. So if we can see this week ending the 31st of March, payment date, because we know the payment date is critical, is the 1st of April, 2020. Now, if I click into here, let's just see if I have anyone. I don't, they've worked over the 750. So in this case, I wouldn't have to top them up. Uh, Let's just go and see if I can find another one. Knowing my luck, I probably won't have one, but let's look at this next this next weekly calendar, which is ending the 7th of April um, to the 8th of April here. So if I click in here and we say, okay, here we go. A debt's only earned $315. We need to top her up to the 750 gross. So what we can do there is we can go into pay employees, and we can do an unscheduled pay run to top that up. So if I go into here, select pay run, we know it's on the weekly format. Oh, sorry, shouldn't select weekly, I should select unscheduled pay run. It will then ask for the payroll cal calendar, which is weekly, the current financial year, which is what we're in. And then we can go to, I believe it was the 7th of April from time B for, for what it was. And then what we're going to do here is go click on a debt over here. Now, I think from memory, and I've got a terrible memory here, but I think it was $315 that we had paid her. So effectively what that means is we need to drop those hours down to zero, and then we need to top her up. So if she was 315, we've got 35 plus, uh, takes us up to the 350, plus we need another 400, which is 435 to get her up to the 750. 
What we then do then, we know that there's no super on it. We know that the tax is going to recalculate somewhat on that. We can click save, close, and then we can post the pay run. Um, once we have post, posted that, I'll just click there. All right, so we've done it as an unscheduled pay run. We can repeat the steps for above for each employee as required, post it, and we can file it with STP so that it gets through to the ATO. Um, you'll need to get, make sure you repeat the process to ensure that you have topped your employees up. Now, the ATO have said that as long as, effectively for this time period, as long as um, each employee has been paid $3,000 by the end of April, I'm just going to, for ease, probably bring that back to the, sec the end of the second fortnight, which is the 26th of April. As long as we ensure that, then we should have enough paid, but just making sure that we're using the right codes so it gets through the ATO in the right format. So that should cover most of it. We've talked about making sure that we have turnover test is there, enrolling our employees, uh, backdating any pays that we need to do, which we've just spoken about, and ensuring any top up payments that are in there and how to do those moving forward. Now, if I just quickly go back, just to safekeeping, a look at the rest of the zero checklist, which is under the payroll section here and payroll support page. So we've checked our business is eligible through the turnover test. We've enrolled our business. We've set up single touch payroll which is, should have already been done. We've enrolled our employees through JobKeeper. We've updated our JobKeeper pay items. So as I said, Zero have pretty well done that for you, but the instructions are on here. So if you do click that link, you can make sure any previous ones that you've done are set up correctly or just refer to what I've spoken about earlier. We can then, we then report and pay our, or report our pay runs to the ATO with single touch payroll as soon as possible. Now, as I said, that is critical. As soon as possible, you lodge, as soon as you lodge the pay run or file uh, or process the pay run, make sure you file it because that data getting to the ATO is going to be critical so that it shows up when we go to step seven, which is complete your monthly declaration with the ATO. The data from this will be fed into the ATO portal so that it will make it a lot easier when we're done. There are some other stuff that Zero is working on. Obviously, it's an ongoing improvement and support um, for the JobKeeper payment process. It's a fairly quick and fast moving situation, this JobKeeper payment, um, and they are working with the ATO um, to, to, make up, to make sure everything's up and running. So that's basically a wrap from what we need to do in Zero. I do hope that helps. What we will also do is we will provide written instructions and written processing on, on how or what I've just gone through. So I do hope that helps. Um, but in the meantime, stay safe. Any issues, do feel free to contact your accountant.